Hey, good evening. Uh, very humble John reporting in here to play a little bit of Immaculate Grid. Played yesterday, and uh, I don't know why. I don't know why, but I was very, very certain that uh, Napoli Joy, who played, uh, you know, almost a century before I was born, um, I was very confident that he had been a speedster. I just in my head, I thought he was a really fast guy. So I put him as a guy who got 200 hits and 30 stolen bases in a game. It turns out he never stole 30 bases. He once stole 29 bases, but I, I didn't even think it was going to be close. I thought he had like a bunch of seasons with 40. That was the Nap joy I had in my head. Turns out I was wrong. So, um, you know, I, uh, I get a lot of kind comments from y'all about how I, uh, um, you know, about all this obscure <laughs> baseball, mostly useless baseball knowledge that I've got stored up. But yeah, sometimes you just uh, picture things in your head a little bit differently. So very humbling uh, yesterday. Going to start sharing my screen. Hopefully do a little bit better today. Hopefully not make assumptions about, uh, uh, or at least bad assumptions about uh, players from, and there were so many better options. That was the funny part was there were so many better options. Anyway, I'm sharing my screen now. Let's hit uh, let's hit the refresh. See if we can do a little bit better this time. Uh, we've got a silver slugger on the right hand side here. Three thousand hits for career. That's going to be an interesting one to try to think of who the most obscure people with each of these teams, which are the Orioles and the A's, are to get to three thousand hits. Three thousand hits and a silver slugger shouldn't be too difficult. Rod Carew will not work. I know that right off the bat uh and then let's see we got blue jays and then rangers on uh on the left hand side so we have to match those up with silver sluggers um and away we go i think i'm gonna take a little bit of a, a calculated risk here and go with um so harold baines will work either of these i think he'll just be a little bit more obscure here uh he was traded um ruben sierra will also work by the way but i'm gonna go with harold baines on uh on this one he was traded from the white Sox to the rangers in exchange for sammy sosa and i think flipped within a year or two to um on, on the A's. He was on like those I, I think like the nineteen ninety and ninety two A's teams that made the playoffs. So let's let's get him in there. He'll work. He would also work over here. So I figure he'll he'll draw a little bit from this one. I could go with Sosa for the other one. He takes under one percent. Sammy Sosa might be a little too popular even though he only played one year with the uh uh, the Orioles. Rafael Palmero is the very obvious one. He definitely uh, played uh, for for both teams. Actually, went, uh, as I wrote in my book, woo, there it is, Baseball's Most Fun for Volities, which I guess you can't really see because it's in the top right-hand corner, but I wrote in my book about people who came back to where they'd once start. Uh, Baines just kept on doing it for both the White Sox and the Orioles. He had three separate stints each for both teams. Um, and uh, so did Rafael Palmero. He kept coming back for uh, uh, to the Rangers and the Orioles. That's who actually who I was I was meaning to mention. But uh, let's see if we can come up with uh, a better one. I'm gonna go Todd Stottlemyer here. Zero point one percent. That's pretty good. Uh, let's see if we can come up with all of the A's who've gone to three thousand hits and then choose our most obscure. So. Um, Ty Cobb will work. Ty Cobb played his last couple seasons with the um, Philadelphia A's. Uh, Nap LeJoy, who famously burned me yesterday, he briefly played, I think actually two stints with the A's. Um, the 1901 season, when the American League was nascent, he was like the first star in the American League. Uh, and that was with the Philadelphia A's before going to the Cleveland uh, Naps next season. Um, Tris Speaker also played one season. Uh, at the end of the season, he played a season, I think, with the Senators and a season with the Philadelphia A's. So he'll work. And then Eddie Collins will work. So all those early guys will work. And then no one, I think, for a little while. And then you get Ricky Henderson. 
um, made it to 3,000 hits with several separate stints. He also makes an appearance in that chapter of this book. Um, who else in there? Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of modern players who've gotten there. If, if for no other reason to kind of assuage myself, because I thought I was being creative here, but like Ricky Henderson will probably do the do the best. And then question is, which of those early people will be the most? I, I don't think there's any being obscure with Ty Cobb. I think I'm gonna go with Nap after he after he burned me yesterday by being slightly less fast than I thought he was. It's all your fault, Matt. It takes 2%. All right. Um, so I, I mentioned like four early century people and then Ricky Henderson. Wonder if I missed anyone there, but I'll think on it. Um, Orioles slash Browns with 3,000 hits. I don't think anyone I mentioned ever made their way to the St. Louis Browns. Um, George Sisler was famously a Brown, but he never had 3,000 hits. He didn't get to 3,000 hits. I don't think Paul Wehner. I know he played for the Dodgers after playing for the Pirates. I don't know if there was anyone else in there. Musial plays whole career for the Cardinals. Frank Robinson barely missed. He had like 29, 50 hits or something like that. And he could have like inserted himself into the lineup. He was the player manager of the uh, Cleveland Indians at the very end of his career. I also wrote about that in my book, about how he could have put himself in the lineup and gotten to probably 3,000 hits and 600 home runs, but he uh, deferred to uh, you know some of the younger talent. So um, anyway, your big ones there are going to be Palmero, who also works up here and will probably draw a lot from up here. Eddie Murray. Cal Ripken Jr. Um, let's see. Tim Raines and Harold Baines both had a ton of hits. Like, I think Tim Raines had 2,600 hits, but no cigar. Um, let's see. No on Beltre, no on Ichiro, no on Jeter, A Rod, Biggio, um, Boggs. When Winfield, you got Rod Carew, Lou Brock, Count Brett, Molitor. So of those, this might be kind of a grid buster. Um, really, the best one here is going to be if anybody in the 3,000 hit club that I probably have already mentioned played like a season with the St. Louis Browns. I just don't think so. And I think I think Murray is like famous enough as an Oriole that my best bet, if it's just him, Ripken, and Palmero, my best bet is to just say he's going to like Palmero's going to draw a lot from here and therefore go with Raphael Palmero down here. But I don't think he's going to be, I think he's going to be like north of 20%. So we'll see. 9%. Okay. I was, I was wrong. Uh, Blue Jays and Orioles. Tony Batista would work. I think. Jose Bautista would work. BJ Ryan will work. Roberto Alomar will work. David Wells will work. Um, I'll say, will Ernie Witt work? Did he play like a season with Baltimore? Actually, I, I don't know that with any confidence. Joe Carter works. I'll go with BJ Ryan. Closers usually do a little bit lower here. Mid aughts guy had a couple good seasons with both teams. Picks two percent. Okay, a little bit higher. Um, let's see. I guess I burned through my obvious pick for uh for Texas and Baltimore. Um, let's see, I think Chris Davis might have started his career at Texas. Or maybe I'm making that up. But a piece of me is is placing him there. Um 
Let's see, other than that. I have to come back to that one. There's gotta be people besides uh besides Palmero. I know there's people besides Palmero. I'm just not uh thinking them thinking of them off the top of my head. Uh Nelson Cruz, he'll work. Uh that'll probably be a pretty popular one. He he only played a season in, in Baltimore, but Nelson Cruz is a recent enough player who's who's made his way around. Um let's see. On Silver Slugger. Did who? Uh, okay, I know I can't say that with a ton of confidence. I, I'm sure Ruben Sierra will work, though. Let's go with him. He also would have worked over here. Takes under one percent. Yeah, he won. I'm sure he won in '89 when he was second in the MVP voting to Robin Yao, who's near and dear to my heart. He's probably on this screen over here somewhere. Yeah, there he is. He's that one. Uh, let's see. Um. Blue Jays who've won Silver Sluggers. Uh, Molitor, I'm pretty sure, is going to work. I'm actually not sure if Olerud's going to work because Frank Thomas won the MVP in 93, that big season. Um, Barfield, I think, would work. Dave Winfield might work. Carlos Delgado will certainly work. Brennan Wells will work. Um, what if Kelly Gruber... Ah, he might have lost to Boggs. Because he had a big year in 1990, but it was around the same time as Wade Boggs. Um, I th think Fred McGriff might work, too, from the early seasons with the Blue Jays, but I'm also not positive there. I gotta believe Barfield's gonna work, though. He takes under 1%. Hit 40 home runs in 86, I want to say, and had a cannon for an arm. So let's see here. And then we just need any player who has won a silver slugger uh, and gotten to 3,000 hits. So that's going to be most people who've gotten to 3,000 hits since Rod Carew. I think Rod Carew is kind of the cutoff. Um, and maybe that's what you could use to your advantage is just be like, I'm not, I'm not sure. If... Oh, you know what? No, Rod Carew did win silver. No, he didn't. He didn't. No, I I was checking myself. Brad Crew never won a Silver Slugger. He um, would have won Silver Sluggers in Minnesota, but the award wasn't created until 1980. And even then, he had some big years with with uh, California Angels. Uh, he lost a couple times to Cecil Cooper, um, and uh, just never never won one. So he's he's one that won't work. Um, Quite, Robin Yount will certainly work for that 82 season and probably 89 as well. He won the MVP both years. Um, George Brett will certainly work. Winfield will certainly work. Henderson will certainly work. Gotta believe Beltre is going to work. Uh, Biggio, pretty sure he'll work. I'm just going to go with Robin Yount on the basis that the start of the Silver Slugger is a little bit obscure. That's not obscure, it's 1980, but not everyone knows that, so I'll just go with Robin Yount. I would say Childhood Hero, but I was four when he retired, so didn't really see him. 2%, okay. And then that leaves us with our final final one here. Nelson Cruz, I think we said was going to be the uh, the safe pick. Um, actually, you know who's? I also talked about. So I've I've had a few moms talk about my book. So I mentioned Palmero down here, um, and I mentioned how he re-returned twice. He went Rangers Orioles Rangers Orioles, um, the in uh before I guess it would have been before the ninety four season. Um, Palmero wanted to resign with Texas by his account. He'd bought his dream home or he was designing his dream home or something like that. And, um, you know, wanted to be at, be in Texas for the long haul. Um, but the Rangers didn't want to meet his asking price. So they, uh, signed Will Clark instead, who had been Palmero's teammate uh, in college and, Cl and Palmero had some not great things to say about Will Clark. Uh, and the Rangers' ownership uh, for that move. The same ownership, by the way, there was an outgoing ownership, but 
Um, like they'd sold the team, but they were hanging around. Um, this is like, uh, well, the, the guy that I'm, I'm trying to remember the guy that co-owned the team with George W. Bush. Um, anyway, he, uh, he's hanging around and he signs Palmero even after Al Palmero had said some not so great things about him. Uh, Clark then goes and signs with the Orioles. So they effectively just flip flop. They both signed five year deals before the 94 season. And then they signed deals with the opposite teams before the 99 seasons. So will Clark will work. That's a pretty good one. I think I'm going to dial him in here. Um, See how he does. 2%. All right. Rarity score of 18. Going sub 20. Can't get rid of that advertisement. Is what it is. Um, yep. I identified all of the Orioles. And I believe I identified all of the A's. Ricky Henderson comes in at 88%. And my pick of Napoli Joy was at 2-ish. So yeah. You've basically got four people splitting 12%. So was it was Nap. It was Cobb. For speaker and Di, Di, uh, and Eddie Collins. So if I had to guess, I would say speaker might have been a little bit better than LaJoy, but I was I was up there. And then as far as these, I hit them all. So I think Palmero was the best choice. Um who knows if I got the best choice on this one. Just for funsies, let's look at all of the silver sluggers in the history of the Texas. Uh, I'm not doing all that. Um, I guess you can't look that up uh, terribly easily, but I think Jeff Burroughs might have been an interesting pick. Uh, like Palmero, certainly. Juan Gonzalez, Pudge Rodriguez, Josh Hamilton, probably Kinsler, probably Beltre. Um, yeah, I'm sure there were there were a number of options, but um, I went with Ruben Sierra because that way I was able to get the top two people from the uh, 89 MVP race, a race that nobody asked to hear more about. So uh, I'll call it there. Uh, it's a lot more fun when you win, but it's also fun to be uh, humbled and learn a new thing about baseball. In the case of me yesterday, I learned that uh, Nap never stole, uh, never stole 30 bases, but he was fresh on the mind. So I was able to uh, whip him out for the A's. So, um, I'll, uh, I'll keep this up. I'll see you guys tomorrow night. And, uh, thanks a lot for the comments. Warms my heart to, uh, know people are watching these videos. So take care.